Hello friends. Can you see me? Is it too dark? Is it too light? Do I need to open up the window? It got dark all of a sudden. Hmm. Okay. So, here we are at story time. And I thought I would try something different. Hi, Cassandra. I thought I would try something different. I would offer you some choices and then you could tell me what you're interested in hearing about. Hi, Deb. So, first of all, she's not here and you can tell her that she missed this. But I have a joke for Suzanne because she asked for a joke. I'm not really good with jokes, but... Here's one. What part of a clock has been used before? What part of a clock has been used before? Hmm. Think. Hmm. What part of a clock has been used before? Hmm. You don't know? Anybody want to guess? Yes, the second hand. You're so smart, Cassandra. You take after me, not your old man. Anyway, <clears throat> good job. So I have quite a selection here for you, and I wanted to know what you all were interested in today. I have this fabulous called little chick. It's a kamishibai. It's um, a Japanese way of telling a story. It's like this. I have spider on the floor. Or, not that, that's too long. If you give a pig a pancake. Hi Becca, thanks for joining. I originally wanted to read The Grouchy Ladybug. Hmm, could do that. Officer Buckle and Gloria. No spiders? Oh, you don't like spiders? Oh, okay, Deb. And, of course, Giggle, Giggle, Quack. Hi, Kimmy! So, I can't stay here for an hour or anything, so I have about 25 minutes because I have class at 7 30 so I can't read as many stories as I'd like so grouchy lady book oh perfect I'm really good at that book cake okay let me get the grouchy lady book okay let me get situated let's see make sure you can see the grouchy ladybug If anybody doesn't know, it's Eric Carl. If you just fell off the place, the planet. The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. All right, I can do giggle, giggle, quack after this. Okay. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It, too, saw the aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Hmm. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. No, they're mine, all mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to fight me for them? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other bug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Oh, 
you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody, somebody bigger? I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and flew off. My goodness, he's a jerk so early in the morning. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. Hey, you. I mean, hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. You want to fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. Hmm. At seven o'clock, it met a stag beetle. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. This dude. At eight o'clock, it came across a praying mantis. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. If you know the words, say them with me. At ten o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. You want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 12 noon, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the snake, right after lunch. Oh, well, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At one o'clock, it, ha it happened upon a hyena. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Oh, uh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a what? A gorilla. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. You want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At Three o'clock, it ran into a what? A rhinoceros. Hey, you, said the ladybug. You want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horns. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. This dude, huh? At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, yo, said the grouchy, grouchy ladybug. You want to fight? If 
you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. See the big tusks? Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale. Hey, yo, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? But the whale did not answer at all. You're not big enough anyway, said the grouchy ladybug. And flew off. See? It's right there. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to no one, said to one of the whale's flippers, it's dark, I can't read. Hey, you! Do you want to fight? But it got no answer. So it flew on. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, Hey, you! You want to fight? But it got no answer. So it flew on. At a quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, Hey, yo! Do you want to fight? And the whale's tail gave the ladybug such a slap boop, that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it had started from. Oh, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. Soon all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You're welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon. The end. Well, I tell you what, there's a lesson there, folks, isn't there, about being hangry. So, would you like to hear another story? I think Deb requested Giggle Giggle Quack. Yes? By Doreen Cronin. I guess I'll turn on the light here. Let's see how that looks. How's that? Better? Yes. Okay. Giggle, giggle, quack. Farmer Brown was going on vacation. He left his brother Bob in charge of the animals. I wrote everything down for you. Just follow my instructions and everything will be fine. But keep an eye on Duck. He's trouble. Farmer Brown thought he heard giggles and snickers as he drove away. But he couldn't be sure. Bob gave Duck a good long stare and went inside. He read the first note. Tuesday night is pizza night, not the frozen kind. The hens prefer anchovies. Giggle, giggle, cluck. Twenty-nine minutes later, there was hot pizza in the barn. Bob checked on the animals before he went to bed. Everything was just fine.
Wednesday is bath day for the pigs. Wash them with my favorite bubble bath and dry them off with my good towels. Remember, they have sensitive skin. Giggle, giggle. Oink. Bob had all the pigs washed in no time. Farmer Brown called home on Wednesday night to check in. Did you feed the animals like I wrote in the note? He asked. Done, replied Bob, counting seven empty pizza boxes. Bob gave Duck a good, long stare. Duck was too busy sharpening his pencil to notice. Just keep him in the house, ordered Farmer Brown. He's a bad influence on the cows. Giggle, giggle, moo, giggle, oink, giggle, quack. Farmer Brown looks like he's having a good time somewhere. Maybe Cancun? Thursday night is movie night. It's the cow's turn to pick. Giggle, giggle, moo. Bob was in the kitchen popping corn. Just as the animals settled in to wash, watch the sound of music, the phone rang. The only thing Farmer Brown heard on the other end was giggle, giggle, quack, giggle, moo, giggle, oink, uh-oh. Duck! screamed Farmer Brown. Uh-oh. It's for you, Bob. Somebody came home early from vacation. Well, how about that duck? Hmm? So, I have time for one more book. Would you like to hear about a dinosaur or would you like to hear about a chick? Tell me what you want to hear. It's a cute little book, but so is the other one. Waiting, 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 waiting. Nobody? Okay, then I will pick. Hopefully, I have it right. I don't have it in the right order. Okay, so you're going to get this book called Don't Forget Dexter. That's a dinosaur. T-Rex. In case you weren't sure. By Lindsay Ward. Don't Forget Dexter. I know it is a tough choice, Kate. Hello? Oh, hi. I'm Dexter. Dexter T. Rexter. Can you help me? I'm looking for my best friend, Jack. We came here together for a checkup. We were coloring, and then I looked up, and... Is anyone there? And Jack was gone. It's been a really long time, like forever. Maybe you've seen him? I know. I'll make you a picture. My friend. How can you not remember him? He was just here. I'm sorry. I don't mean to shout. Please don't go. Hey, you think this guy saw him? Excuse me, hello, Mr. Fish? Have you seen my best friend, 
Jack? I know. I'll ask this lady up here. I bet she knows where Jack is. Hello, Mrs. Lady? Can you help me? I know. I'll sing our song. Then Jack will come back and find me. Dexter Diner, stomp through the swamp. Dexter Diner, chomp, chomp, chomp. He'll be here any second. Huh. Maybe he can't hear me. I know. I'll sing louder. Dexter Dino, stomp through the swamp. Dexter Dino, chomp, chomp, chomp. Is he coming? Do you see him? I don't understand. How could he forget me? I sang our song. Why isn't he coming back? Oh no, what if he left me on purpose? Nope, this isn't happening to me. I'm Dexter T. Rexter, the toughest, strongest, coolest dinosaur, dinosaur there has ever been. Ever. Right? I mean, look at my tail. See how swishy it is? Swish, swish, smash. And I've got big teeth, chomp, chomp, chomp. And my claws are pretty sharp, scratch, scratch, scratch. And my feet, they make really cool sound. Listen, stomp, stomp, stomp. What do you mean? Maybe he likes something more. More than me? Like another toy? Oh, no, you don't think. No, not that. Anything but that. Cars and trucks and things that go. I can't compete with that. I can't honk. I can't beep. No siren, no flashing lights, no engine, no wheels, no battery. Not good. I can't even make cool revving sounds. Wait, what did you say? You think dinosaurs are awesome? Even better than trucks? Really? Me too. I know. Wait, right there. Detergents, super genius. Oh, Dexter's super genius. Escape plan. Lots of determination. Unhelpful spectator. Extra sturdy climbing rope. Grrr. Ah! Again? Whew, that's hard work. Splash! Uh-oh. <clears throat> what if I never get out of here? No more stomping, no more chomping, no more singing. I love singing. No more playtime, no more bath time, no more bedtime snuggles, no more Jack. He's really never, ever, ever, ever coming back. He's back! Dexter! I knew it! And you were so worried. Dexter Dino, race around the room. Dexter Dino, vroom, vroom, vroom. The end. Goodness, I was so worried. I wasn't sure if Jack would come back. But he did. Aren't you happy? Yes, I was worried too. So, how about one more joke before I have to go? Because 
so I have to get to class at 7.30. Why are pianos so noble? This is really hard. You're not going to get this. Why are pianos so noble? And, and, thinking, thinking, thinking. I told you that was a hard one. Going to come back to that. What's the best name for the wife of a lawyer? Hmm? What's the best name for the wife of a lawyer? Hmm. Hmm. What's the best name? Hmm. Anyone? Anyone? No? Are these too hard for you? Hmm. That's right, Kate. Good job. Yay! They have all the keys to life, so... No, Cassandra, that's just way too existential. It's a kid's book here. Why are pianos so noble? Because they are upright, grand, and square. Mm, whatever. <laughs> How about uh, one more? Let's see. I'll give you all an easy one. I know that was coin. This was written in 1963. What do you expect? Um, what time is it when a pie is equally divided among four hungry people? Hmm. What time is it when a pie is divided among four hungry people. Four hungry people. Four. 314? Yeah, no. Sorry. You want to try again? That was close. It was real close. A quarter to one. Ah! <laughs> oh, these are so terrible. Aren't they great? Well, thank you all for joining my story time. Maybe one evening I'll read a story. I dug this out of the studio from 1972. What's happening to me? I'll, sh I'll read it late at night because it's got boobies in it. And I don't want Facebook to kick me off because there's titties on it. Okay? So, I hope everyone has enjoyed story time. If you want to make suggestions, put them down below in the comment thing. Everyone, have a great night. And I'll see you next time. Oh, let's turn it off.